All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christina, aka That Variety Nerd, and today, as you can probably guess by the title and from the shirt that I am wearing, we are going to be reacting to AEW's All Out show here tonight. I'm quite excited for it. There's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty stacked card. There's some matches that I'm really looking forward to more than others, of course. I mean, that's normal with a wrestling show. But I'm just excited to see what happens. Uh, we've got Darby Allen versus CM Punk. We've got Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage. We've got the Steel Cage match with the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros. We've got Miro versus Eddie Kingston. We've got the Women's Battle Royal, the Casino Battle Royale, I think that is what it's called, right? Uh, but if there's a matchup that you want to get to, those timestamps are going to be down below in the description. And if you hear all kinds of noises, I live in the middle of Cincinnati. So there will be some fireworks at around 9, 9.30. So if there's any sort of jumps or anything like that, or if we miss a match or two, that is why, but we're going to push through it. But I want to give you all that disclaimer before we got going. So grab your snacks, grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy, and let's watch AEW's All Out. All right, here we go. Well, I guess AEW was like, oh, this is one of the matches Christina's looking forward to. Let's just, you know, throw it on first. But no, I like how this match is starting things off. You can tell the fans are into it and they're invested and the energy's there. So I'm here for that. Honestly, I don't care who wins this match because I like both of them. Right, Miro's got some space. That seems about right. You know, get get yourself together. I'm, I'm all for it. All right, well, Kingston's right out of the gate. I'd love to see that. Oh, man, Miro's got him. Or not. Oh, my God, Miro's counter right there. Like, Kingston was just running off the apron, and then, like, Miro just slammed him on the outside. That was cool. Ooh, that camera angle on the replay was kind of cool how they did it from above. That was nice. Yeah, really, I want to know who the one is going to be to stop Miro, but it's going to be a big deal when that happens, I think. Excalibur, how do you know that that was what he was going to go for? Like, he was literally just running towards the ropes. All right, we got some momentum shifting for Eddie Kingston right here. All right, that was a nice suplex. Yeah, I was going to say, this seems like a battle of, like, the neck versus the lower back. And, oh my god, wait, was that the turnbuckle padding that just fell off? Oh my god, look at, like, the welting on Miro's chest. Like, Miro's, like, a fairly tan dude, I would say. But you can still see the, like, welting from all those chops on him. That's awesome. Okay, was the referee doing something stupid? Because they were saying that the referee was being stupid on commentary just now. And the crowd just let them know about it. What? The match was decent until the very end. What the poop, man? What the poop? Okay, I just saw what happened and I'm still like, huh? What? I mean, maybe this is setting it up for a rematch where maybe we get some more stakes at play and stuff like that. Like maybe an ODQ type of thing. But God dang, that was, that was a really dumb ending. But a decent match otherwise. Oh, good lord. Y'all didn't even let these two like have some sort of a standoff or, you know, finish the entrance theme before ringing the bell. Okay. I like how they're mixing in like some of the people from like Japan and stuff like that on AEW with like people that we're more familiar with, like your John Moxley's and Archer's and stuff like that. I'm here for that. I like Kojima's gear though. I really do. Why does everybody have to do the trigger finger thing also? I never understood that. That was a very nice suplex though off the top. That was very nice. Oh, what a way to get out of that right there. I also like the camera shot right there where they were kind of going from above to, you know, get a feel for the arm bar and stuff like that. I like that. All right, that was cool. That was cool. I'm, I'm not trained or anything, but I don't think like this headlock thing that we've got going on here is a bulldog. Wait, is Moxley's elbow like busted open or something? Cause that's what it looks like. But was that, was that a paradigm shift or what? Okay, well, John Moxley won. I thought the match was good. It was a decent watch. <laughs> Moxley's reaction just there was perfect. He's like, oh crap. Again, I don't know much about New Japan or Japanese wrestling, but Minoru Suzuki is a big flipping deal. If this is what we're getting and it's not even a match, I don't want to know what it's going to look like when we do get a match. Oh man, Moxley's out. I want to see what happens with this situation here. Okay, but I really like how Britt and her team, how they're all like matching and stuff. I like that cohesion. That's nice. I like their group. And I am actually really interested to see how this match goes, because this is, again, one of these matches that I've been looking forward to. So I've got a burning question. So if we have a championship introduction for this match, why didn't we get one for the TNT championship? Unless if I've just been living under a rock and they just don't get one for the TNT championship. I don't know. Oh, Britt took down the arm. Oh, what's Statlander doing here? Oh, that was a unique kick right there. I'm so thrown off here because I think Orange Cassidy on the outside of the ring is wearing sweatpants. 
Like, doesn't the dude usually wear, like, jeans? And, you know, my sweatpants, they've got pockets. So, I mean, I can be like Orange Cassidy right now. All right, Statlander's building some momentum. Nice knee right there. Okay, well, that was a nice counter right there. Oh, God, what a slam. Oh, okay, that was a nice stomp from Britt Baker right there. She kind of just, like, ran and jumped onto the uh, steps. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Excalibur. <laughs> and got the stomp right there. That, that was a good little bit right there. I feel like this match had kind of started out a little bit rough, but it's been getting better as the match is going on. Well played, Britt. Well played. And the crowd imploded. Statlander just kicked out of that too? Yeah, this match was all right. I can't think of anything bad about it to say. It was, again, a decent match. But Chris Statlander looked great in this matchup especially, but I think the right person won. I want to see Dr. Britt Baker have like a decent run with the title. It's a pretty fire entrance, I'm not gonna lie. Confusing at first, but it's pretty cool. At least they're making the steel cage like feel like a little bit of a bigger deal with the entrances and stuff. That's a nice touch. And I like the Lucha Bros, but hey, this was cool. I, I'm here for that. That entrance gets a clap for me. The, the love is there for the Lucha Bros and I'm here for, okay, good. We like people beating the crap out of each other right away in the steel cage. I mean, you can win a steel cage match by going outside the cage, or at least that's what I thought. But to be fair, the rules are so inconsistent with AEW that I'm just getting confused. Again, I feel like the Lucha Bros are really going to thrive in this kind of environment, and we're seeing that right off the bat. They're using their environment to their advantage quite well, so that's a that's a thumbs up. Okay, we, we can do without the hip gyrating. That was cool from Phoenix right there. That was cool. I'm going to assume that the uh, story of this match is who is the flippier team. Who's the flippiest of the flippiest? <laughs> Veterans Instinct, Don Callis, both teams have been around for a little while, okay? I, I, I would assume it would be the case for both of them. What What is even happening? Okay, this just doesn't look like it's gonna be safe whatsoever. Can we just give the crowd one title change tonight and have this be the title change? Well, that's because nobody wants the Bucks to win. They want the Lucha Bros because the Lucha Bros have earned it. They went through that god dang tournament that was actually quite enjoyable to watch. Oh no. They're trying to rip off the masks now. That's not cool. What is happening? Why are we untying our shoes here? Oh no. That's a shoe covered in thumbtacks on the bottom. How can you walk in those? Oh no, I don't like this. Okay, Penta's right in front of him protecting Ray Phoenix. We, we appreciate you, Penta, you real MVP, you. Oh, Penta just took that. Oh no. Oh man, Penta just deserves like all the awards for just this match alone. Oh my God, no. Absolutely not, dude. The thumbtack shoe is just dumb. Smart, but dumb at the same time. Where did Ray Phoenix get all this energy from? I mean, to be fair, he was kind of out of the match for a few minutes, so I guess that adds up. Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out, Tony Schiavone. What are we watching? Both teams are using the environment to their advantage here, and I'm all for it. Why did they look like that they were just coordinating right there? Like, I don't think that's how it's supposed to work in, like, a blood feud or any sort of feud. I guess we're going in a circle slap. <laughs> I, I don't like this. I'm nervous. Oh, God, this better be it. This better be it. All right, the Lucha Bros won. The crowd's happy about it. The match was good. I mean, even through all the blood and the cage and stuff like that, you can see how emotional of a moment this is for the Lucha Bros. Like, like that's what it's all about. Wrestling should be about moments like this where it's like you see two people working their butts off and just getting the fruits of their labors. But no, it was a good match. Probably the best match of the night so far, I would say. And... Okay, we got the club lady. Well, how are we supposed to know who's in which group? Maybe that's part of it. All right, we got Sheeta in there coming in first. I'm here for that. Okay, Sky Blue. Apparently she's like really popular in the Chicago scene. All right, so we have Sakura coming up next. All right, this is a good start. I like how we're, I, I like the group that we're starting with. We're gonna see who the next couple of people are. Okay, we have the bunny, okay. I feel like we're gonna see more of that in this match with Penelope Ford and the bunny. And with Anna J and Tay Conti, I think. All right, Abaddon's in here next. Definitely an interesting first group of people. We'll see who's going to be coming up next as we go along here. If I'm somebody in this matchup, I'm just going to be chilling in the corner and not dealing with crap. At least we got the time to look at, too. Okay, so Sky Blue and Abaddon are both eliminated. Diamonds are next. Let's see who's in the Diamonds group. 
I'm glad Anna Jay's back. She's been one of my favorites at AEW for a bit. I can't hear the I can't hear Justin Roberts, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the crowd's even confused too because the music was too loud. I'm glad they at least give us the names after everybody's been in this thing. That that helps. And we got the next group of people coming out here, so you know, cleared out the ring quite a bit. All right, we got the hearts out next. Thunder Rosa. All right, we got the next suite up next. Let's see what's happening here. All right, Ty Conti actually waking up the crowd a little bit. People are excited. That's nice. That's nice to see. We got legit Layla Hirsch out here. Those are some nice Germans right there from Layla. If Layla, d oh my God, she just German Nyla Rose. All right, Jade Cargill. I love Jade. Again, there's a lot of potential in this women's division. I'm glad that we're getting this on the main car, to be honest, because a battle royal is always just like a nice little breather kind of match. And it's furthering some things that we've been seeing here, furthering some plot developments and that sort of thing and feuds and setting some things up. And I'm, I'm here for that. I want to know who that Joker is, though. All right, Ruby Soho, the former Ruby Riot debuting. All right, now we're picking things up here. Listen to that reaction. I mean, you can you can kind of feel that emotion radiating off of her. Okay, but the jacket's even cool too. She's gonna be a fantastic addition to this women's division. She really is. And she can go float over to Impact if she wants to. So that's even better, all right. All right, thank you. This This was a nice treat. All right, now we're down to Nyla Rose, Ruby Soho, and Thunder Rosa. This could be interesting. I mean, we've already seen Britt Baker and Nyla Rose. I would assume that they would want to hold off against Thunder Rosa a little bit. So maybe Ruby gets the first crack. We're down to Thunder Rosa and Ruby Soho. I want this match. This is a, this is a match that I want to see. Two in-ring vets just getting the showcase that they deserve. You love to see it. Oh man, they're both over the top rope now. Oh, that was close. This is quite interesting. I like how they're kind of just trying to outmaneuver each other here. Oh, that kicks it. Can we appreciate how she's actually using the song like Ruby Soho by Rancid as her entrance theme? It all came, it all, it all just comes together and I love that. That's gonna be a good match right there. Ruby Soho versus Dr. Britt Baker. That's, that's gonna be good. Okay. We've got a countdown thing here. I'm a little skeptical about it because it is an MJF match. <laughs> MJF, oh my God, this man. <laughs> oh, that was great. MJF is great. That is all, that, that deserves a clap right there. Good job, MJF. Wait, how many matches has Jericho had? They said like 2,700 or something crazy like that. I wish I could hear the crowd more. What What is happening with this audio? Like, it, it's like the guitar and the crowd are not matching up. I wish they would have held off on that last labor of Jericho until All Out, but I want to see what happens here because here's the thing. They only specified AEW, so even if Jericho loses, he could go over to like Impact or Japan if he wants to. I'm not trying to start anything. I, I, I want Jericho to go out on his own terms. Oh my god, you have that entire arena just flicking off MJF. Oh, okay, well they both just went for drop kicks right there. I don't get why we didn't start out the match just kind of slugging each other, because I feel like, I mean, if my career's on the line, I would just want to beat the crap out of whoever's trying to end my career. I think MJF just tripped over the chair right there. Do we just not have any count outs in AEW or just only during certain matches? Because I think we've only had one match tonight where they factored in the count outs. Okay, I guess we're duking it out through the crowd. What is Jericho carrying? What is that? Is that like a barricade kind of thing? Oh my God, that one almost went right into the back of his neck. So wait, is there just like no rules in this match? Did we get this established somewhere? Because I don't know, we haven't had that established yet. The only stipulation that I heard about this match was that if Jericho loses, his AEW in-ring career is over with. That's the only thing that I got. I didn't hear anything else about a disqualification or lack there for of or anything like that. I don't know. Why is MJF like pelvic fr thrusting Jericho's hand there? I'm, re I'm really confused. Okay, good. Jericho just countered that into a really nice suplex. I'm so torn in this match because it could go either way, to be honest. Oh, man. MJF with, like, that toss right into the corner. Oh, boy. What is MJF thinking about here? Oh, no. I, I hope Jericho's okay after that because that looked a little scary. Wait, wait. We weren't enforcing a count out until now? 
Uh, see, JR's calling it out too. Thank you, JR. Yeah, the one time MJF does any sort of high flying, it kind of bit him in the butt. But that was a really good power bomb move right there into the apron right there from Jericho. That was nice. Oh man, is MJF okay now? Is everybody okay in this match? Because I'm starting to get concerned here. I'm, I'm keeping my eye though on that baseball bat though, especially because MJF is close to it. All right, Jericho hit a code breaker. That is quite nice to see. I swear to God, we haven't had interference this entire night. And even at that, it was minimal. And now we got Wardlow. Okay, we got Jake Hager, but like, what, was this necessary? This was kind of just a distraction. Oh, and MJF hit the Judas. Oh, but Jericho's near the rope. Oh, this was crap. Jericho had his foot on the rope. You're supposed to look at everything and see if somebody's got the rope. Okay, good, we got this other referee in this. We're restarting the match. I mean, rightfully so, given this crap that just happened. Oh my God, no. Oh no, but MJF's got the arm bar thing on. Oh, that was close, but MJF is still hanging out of that arm though. Oh, but Jericho, I think, got out of it just now. Oh, he's right in the middle of the ring with the walls. This, this is over for MJF. All right, well, Jericho got the win over MJF, and I really hope this feud is over with, because I want both of them to go on to better things at this point, because they've been at it for like a year, year and a half now. Let's head on to the next match, shall we? I don't think I ever expected to react to a CM Punk match. Okay, so we're starting this off with like a helicopter and a body bag. Okay, looks like Darby Allen's on the helicopter. Who's in the body bag? I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I'm a little concerned here. <laughs> what just happened? This crowd's gonna be so spent by the time the main event gets here. I swear, once we get this AEW video game, everybody's gonna be having their entrances to everything like with Darby Allen. Between the skateboarding and the music, like it's it's the perfect creator wrestler. We're getting CM Punk's in-ring return after seven and a half years. This is bonkers to me. We're, we're gonna have to have a Punk and Jericho feud over the theme songs at the rate everybody's singing at. It's clobbering time, friends. I, I'm so excited. Like, I'm actually getting like a little emotional here. Tony, like Darby's always like that. He's just kind of just a very chill dude. Just chilling in the corner. Wow, okay. I like this new look that Punk's got going on. It's familiar, but different. And I like that. I'm here for that. Punk sat down, Darby sitting in the corner. That's a cool moment right there. I think they're both just kind of just taking in the moment right there. And I love that. There's like, you can, even you can hear at home, there's like that rumbling there. AEW has been doing such a great job of Darby Allen, just in general. And again, he's like the wrestler that like 15 year old me would enjoy. Just as much as 25 year old me right now. <laughs> oh, Punk caught Darby, but Darby got out of the way right there. Oh man, Darby's right out of the gate right here. I'm always blown away by just how quick that Darby Allen truly is. He's quick, but like effective, if that makes any sense. Are we just enforcing countouts on certain matches? Cause that, that seems to be the thing. Punk's looking great in this match. I like how this match genuinely does feel different and not just because of like the weight of this match. Normally I'm like, oh my God, matches are way too long. But like this match in particular, I'm glad that they're like letting it just marinate. Because it is a big moment and I like everybody in this match. <laughs> the crowd does too. I, I like how Darby's kind of in like a different kind of match where it's like, you can tell he's doing a lot of the high flying stuff and all that, like your typical Darby Allen stuff. But like, I like how it feels like he's being made to wrestle a different kind of match where it's like more in the ring and stuff like that. And I think it's great. Darby Allen getting some good offense in right here. I like that. I feel like I should be saying a lot more in this match. I'm just so spent and also I'm just absorbing the match. Oh, but he landed outside the ring. Yeah, but that whole sequence right there was as smooth as butter. So I mean, for that, we'll give that an applause right there. And Punk's GTS was incredibly sharp. Unless if he just pulls something out right here, I don't know, but... Oh, there he goes. <laughs> well, I feel like it makes sense because if you've been in that position already, you're gonna maybe figure out how to get out of that. Okay, but that was great. That was great. That was that was a great counter from Punk. He just sat up and smiled. Oh my God. What a match we're seeing, friends. Oh, there it is. Punk got it. That That's it. That match was great. Um, So far, that is match of the night. And I'm not just saying that either, but... 
That was a great match. I loved how Darby had to wrestle a kind of just different match too. This this was just, this was a great match. The mannerisms, the body language, the psychology. Like these two were meant to have a match together. If we get like Punk versus Sting, I don't know what we're gonna do. This this is wonderful. Like Sting even looks proud of Darby too. And Punk looked awesome. Darby was freaking insane per usual, but like he was he was just great. I loved it. I loved every single bit of this match. I forgot this match was a thing. It's eleven o'clock at night, QT. We don't care. Paul White looks freaking fantastic. Alright, well I guess the match is a thing. It's gonna be a thing. Excalibur, this match is not gonna go on that long. I want Paul White to just choke slam him and just be done with this mess. And that's no disrespect to the dudes involved in this match, especially Paul White, but we're spent from that match. Like, I wanna go and just like take a smoke break and I don't even smoke. But Paul White looks freaking fantastic. The match did what it needed to accomplish and he looked fabulous. We appreciate you, Paul White. We appreciate you. I, I'm so spent, y'all. My only qualm with this is like, we saw this match already on free television for a different title, so I don't know. Christian looks fantastic. I mean, you're talking about a dude who's gone in 180 in 2021 alone. I feel like knowing these two were gonna get like a different matchup this time because it is the main event of a pay-per-view that people, myself included, paid $50 to see. If we could just let Kenny and Christian do their thing by themselves, that would be great. Callus is fine out there too because he's involved in this mess. Oh, Christian's right out of the gate there. Oh my god, I don't blame the dude at all. I'm all for it. These two are going at it right out of the gate and beating the crap out of each other. And that's the energy that we need at 11, 18 p.m. at night here on the East Coast. I just don't even, again, this whole show, this whole show, especially the last few matches have been so surreal. Christian got some good air on that move right there. That was nice to see. I'm so confused. Are there just no rules in this match or like in any of these matches? <laughs> I'm just now noticing this, but like Christian and Kenny have very similar gear. And I don't know if that was like done on purpose or what's going on here. Because it makes sense if they both have some kind of gold because, well, they both have some kind of gold. What's going on in the crowd? There's like a few people like yelling at each other and flicking each other off. I'm really concerned here. This crowd spent and I am spent too. I, I will give Kenny and Christian a lot of credit though because somehow they had to follow up the CM Punk match in Chicago. For real though, I have no idea how they're doing it. But I will say this, I love how they get the top down angles for like certain moves and stuff like the one that we just saw here with Christian and the spear through the table. That was cool. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna put away Kenny Omega with the AEW championship because Kenny's like freaking Thanos as long as, as long as he's holding this championship. Yeah, but he had a steel chair last time. That's how he won. That was the difference maker in that match. I will say this, as a whole, this match has been good. I'm just tired. Oh no, I don't like where this is going at all. If he's gonna do what I think he's gonna do. Oh God, that's it. But seeing the one-winged angel, like, in a different way, like, you know, off the top rope and everything, I thought that was cool. But I mean, like, if Christian had to have a first loss in AEW, I'm glad that it was, like, you know, against the world champion. I feel like that makes sense, right? Well, what do they have to celebrate for? Like, y'all lost some titles earlier in the night. <laughs> but it does beg the question, who is going to be next for Kenny Omega and what will be next for Christian? At least Christian, we know, is going to be chilling out on Impact and everything, probably, and also on Dynamite. But what's going to happen next with Kenny and company? Okay, we got the Jungle Express. At least they're trying. Oh no, Kenny's got a microphone. I feel like somebody's gonna come out because he's saying best in the world, no one's on his level. Oh, snap! Adam Cole in AEW. <laughs> the pro wrestling tease people in the front row though. <laughs> oh no, we're getting a Cole shirt too. Oh, snap! Wait, hang on here. Well, Cole just took out Jungle Boy because everybody in the Elite is just, like, affiliated with each other. That explains it. I'm so god dang over this faction, man. I'm over it. I can tolerate Cole and Kenny, but I can't tolerate the rest of the squad. Yeah, but it's Adam freaking Cole. No. Oh, this was a great way to introduce both of them. No way. I will say this, when they do debuts in AEW these days, they do debuts. We got Brian Danielson. We had two debuts, 
that we all probably thought were going to be much more spread out. But hey, I'm on board with this. I like how they introduced Brian and Cole. But I don't like how they made it seem like Cole was just going to slide right into the group. You know what I mean? Like, he's just cool on his own. I wish he could just do his own thing. I, I feel like that ending made up for the main event match itself. Because to be honest, I'm spent. The crowd was spent. We were all anticipating people, I'm sure, you know, based on the internet and the rumor mill and that sort of thing. But I'm glad they debuted both Brian and Cole kind of at the same time. And just, it actually freshens things up a little bit. And we could get some really decent matches with all those people involved. All right, kids, it's approximately 11.51 at night. I'm tired. I'm not editing this until tomorrow when my brain is freshened up. But... Overall, I enjoyed AEW All Out 2021. We had some interesting debuts, a lot of good momentum going, some good matches. Uh, as soon as we get a Brian Danielson shirt on uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, we're snatching one up. Please and thank you. In terms of the matches I enjoyed the most, I enjoyed the World Tag Team Championships, mainly because, again, just the idea of the Lucha Brothers working their butts off to get to this point. And all the matches were at least good to, like, you know, great in terms of matches. Uh, for me, match of the night was obviously the Punk and Darby Allen match. Just It had everything to it. It had a lot of secret sauce to it in terms of the psychology and just how they interacted with each other. I thought it was perfect, and Punk did not lose a beat whatsoever. And then, of course, we had all the debuts that were happening tonight, too. We had, of course, Ruby Soho. She's going to be a wonderful and much-needed addition to the women's division. I want to see her versus Thunder Rosa at some point. I feel like we're going to get that, like, I would lean towards maybe next year. I don't know, but I want to see that match. And she just really freshens things up. And, you know, the women's division could use, you know, more in-ring veterans just like her and Thunder Rosa and so forth, right? Uh, Cole's debut was really cool, too. And I feel like it made sense, even though I'm over the whole elite thing at this point. I'm excited to see him at AEW. I think he's going to be a really good addition like, whether it's, like, in a tag team match or whether if it's for, like, the TNT championship or even just, like, a regular feud. He could have some good matches with a lot of people on that roster and fresh matches and stuff. And then, of course, Brian Danielson. And I just, uh, once once Danielson gets a shirt, we're getting it. <laughs> but along with the, along with all the bright spots cuz a lot of the matches were good we need to get some rules established in this company like what matches are no DQ do we have count outs little things like that were infuriating especially the MJF and Jericho match because they were having a good match up until the ending and i'm like seriously seriously okay but outside of that there are a lot of good moving pieces tonight and i think it's hopefully going to build on and again aw there's a lot of momentum a lot of moving pieces i just don't know how long the moving piece I, I don't know how long the momentum's going to last now that you've got the main people that you want over there like your punks and danielsons and coles over there i don't know what they're going to do from this point onward but i'm interested to see where all this is going to go so let me know what you all thought in the comment section down below what did you all think about AEW All Out? And who would you like to see all of our new debuts go up against? So, again, on that note, thank you all so much for all the love and support for this channel, for the reaction videos, and et cetera, et cetera. So, on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you all around later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>